Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. Um, in this video, we're going to be talking about box and whisker plots with outliers. Okay, so in the last video, I talked about just building box and whisker plots in general. Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it with outliers. And then I'm also going to show you how we can use the calculator to do a box and whisker plot to really help us. Okay, so in the last video, we did it all by hand. In this video, I'm going to show you a, a different way to do it just towards the end there. Okay. So what is an outlier? An outlier is, I like to think of it as an oddball data point. Okay, so in your list of data, it's the data points that just kind of stand out and you're like, I don't think that fits with the rest of the data. Okay, there usually will be pretty obvious, but sometimes you can have a suspicious outlier and we've got to be able to prove that it is in fact an outlier. We can't just say, oh, you look like an outlier, you're, you're thrown out, right? We've got to prove that it is in fact an outlier. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, when we've been given a data set, I like to start by just scoping out my suspects and looking for suspicious ones. Um, so looking at this, most of my data falls in the 80 to 90 range. And then over here, I've got a 30. And I'm like, that is really low. Okay, and up here, I've got 120. That seems pretty high. So those are my two suspected outliers, but I can't just throw them out. Okay, I need to be able to prove that they, uh, that they are outliers. Something interesting about outliers is that they will skew your data severely. So I always tell, um, make the comparison of, you know, if uh, my students and I are all average height and, um, you know, some a little taller, some a little shorter, but all pretty much average and we're in the room and then LeBron James walks in the room, right? All of a sudden, all of our data points of how tall we are would be so much smaller and his is so high and I don't even know how tall LeBron James is, but he's really tall, okay? Um, so it would skew our data for the classroom and our average height would be much higher than it actually would really be. So it would not be a good representation of the data when you've got outliers in there. So I hope that made sense. Um, okay, so how do we prove something is an outlier or not? Well, we need to start by just laying out our five number summary and then we'll determine, um, we'll use these two formulas from there. So um, I'm just gonna quickly go through the five number summary because in my last video, I spent a lot of time on it. So if you need a refresher on that, check out the last video, that's where you'll find that. All right, so my minimum is 30, that's my lowest data point. All right, my maximum is 120, that's my highest data point. I need to know the Q2, which would be the median of all the data. So I'm going to move in. I see it's right at 90. All right, I need to know my Q1. Um, my 90 has been used, so that's done. I need to just find um, the center here. Uh, I've got two in the center, so I'll need to find the average. The average of 80 and 85 is going to be 82.5. That would be my Q1. And for my Q3, cover up the 90. This is my upper quartile. Um, so it would be between 93 and 94, which would end up being 93.5. Again, I know I'm flying through this. Okay, I have my five number summary now. Now, I also need to know what my IQR is. And remember, IQR is your Q3 minus your Q1. So that would be 93.5 minus 82.5. So doing that on the calculator. Okay, so my IQR in this case is 11. That's the difference between my Q3 and my Q1 value. Okay, now. On to the outliers. We need to know, are there any outliers in this data set? So for my lower quartile, 
which would be um, this suspected 30. So I'm suspicious of that 30. An outlier would have to be less than my Q1 value minus 1.5 times the IQR. So an outlier, I'm going to fill the info in, would be less than Q1, which we said is 82.5, minus 1.5 times the IQR of 11. So let's put that in the calculator. 82.5 minus 1.5 times 11. So an outlier would be less than 66. So I need to look at all my data points and say, do I have any data points less than 66? Yes, that 30. So that confirms that 30 is an outlier. I'm going to go ahead and write that. Yes, so 30 is 1. Now, we need to do the same thing up here for this 120 and see, is that an outlier? So the formula is similar, but a little different. An outlier would be greater than Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR. So this is for the upper quartile since we're in the top half now. So let's see, outlier would be greater than our Q3, which is 93.5 plus 1.5 times our IQR of 11. Let's put that in the calculator. 93.5 plus 1.5 times 11. So 110. So that tells me that an outlier would have to be greater than 110. So is 120 greater than 110? Yes. So we have another outlier. So 30 and 120. So what does that mean for our five number summary? Well, it means that because I know 30 is an outlier, that can't be my minimum anymore. It's going to totally mess up my box and whisker plot and it's going to skew the data. So instead of it being 30, I'm going to go with the next lowest number in the data set, 80. That's going to be my minimum now. Now I should point that I now that I have a new minimum, that doesn't mean I go back and I recalculate my Q1 or my Q3. We, we don't do that. These still stay the same. It's just instead of 30, it's going to be the next lowest number. Same thing with the maximum. Now that I know 120 is an outlier, I can't use that as a maximum anymore. So it'll be the next highest number, which was 94. 94 will be my new maximum. Okay, so how do we turn this into a box and whisker plot? Well, I've got my five number summary. I went ahead and already created a number line. You will need to create one that matches um, the numbers. So you would need to be able to go all the way from 30 to 120 on your number line, which is what I've done here. And I actually went a little above and went to 130, okay? Um, so my minimum would be 80. Q1, 82.5, that'd be somewhere in there. Q2 would be 90. Q3 would be 93.5, somewhere in there. And my maximum would be 94, somewhere in there. See how tiny that box <laughs> it ended up being? Um, so I create my little whiskers, right? And with my three innermost points, I'm gonna do a box. Now, the reason why I had to make this so large is I'd still have to show my outlier. So I still have to show 30, and I show it with a little star. So there's an outlier at 30, and there's also an outlier at 120. Now, ideally, you should maybe make this a little bigger so we can really see the spread there. Um, but, you know, you only have so much space, you gotta do the best you can. And then you gotta be able to show the asterisks that are your outliers. A shortcut of sorts, personally, I don't really like using the calculator for this. I prefer to just do it by hand. About half of the students I teach prefer to do this on the calculator. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. The main button we're using this unit is um, the stat button. Now, it's a good idea to go ahead and clear your calculator because if you were doing something, you know, in the y equals or whatnot, you were graphing, it could, it could very well mess this up. So go ahead and clear the calculator. Second plus 712. All right. Go to your stat. 
go to edit. Remember, this is where our lists are. So I want to write out my data set in this list one. So I've got 30, 80. Uh, now, I don't include that. That was not part of the data set, just so you know. Okay, we're only including the original data. Okay, uh, 85, 86, 90, 92, 93, 94, and 120. Oops. And 120. Okay. So once you've got all your data in, um, I should have nine points. I'm just going to double count to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. So I can feel good that I got all of them in there. All right, so you're going to, there's a couple options. One would be to go to stat, go over to calc, and use this variable stats again. We've been here before. And if you scroll down, you'll see your minimum is 30. Your Q1 is 82.5. Now, notice we ended up crossing out the 30, and we said, no, it'll be 80. This is going to show you the original, okay, prior to us doing outliers. So just keep that in mind, okay. Um, Q1 was 82.5. Median, which is the same thing as Q2, is 90. Q3 is 93.5. And the maximum, it, it shows the outlier, so 120, okay. Um, now, in order to, that's one way just to kind of check your five number summary. In order to actually do a box plot on this calculator, we need to go to um, second Y, and that, that chooses that stat plot option. So second stat plot, okay? And you'll see the plot is off right now. Anytime you clear your calculator, it's gonna cut it off. Okay, so we need to cut that on. So hit enter, we need to move the flashing over or um, click on so that the flashing moves over okay go to your down and I need to move this over see where it has the box plot now you got two box plots here and a lot of times people don't know which one to choose okay the one with the little dots on it that's gonna show you with outliers okay and it's gonna point out the outliers this one is not going to show you the outlier. It's just going to treat the outlier like it's a part of the data, okay? And it is, but we want to really emphasize that they are outliers. So I always pick that one. Hit enter. So that one's chosen. Um, we want it to do for list one. Yes. So now we want to go to zoom. And we're hitting zoom 9, and if you scroll down, 9 is zoom stat. It's going to make the window exactly what it needs to be for my box plot. Okay, so there it is. There's my little box plot, and there are my outliers. Now, if you want to see what these points are, we can do that. We just hit trace, and see how my spaceship shows up there, and it's showing me my, um, this is the, Minimum is 80. That's my Q1, 82.5. Q2, 90. Q3, 93.5. And then our maximum is 94. So notice now that we wanted it to show with outliers, it's going to show you with the new min and max. Okay. So just pointing that out. We can also see the outliers. If I scroll over here, I see I've got an outlier of 120. And if I scroll over here, I see the outlier of 30. Okay, so that's a way to also visually see this on the calculator. Personally, I prefer to just do it by hand. Like I said, every time I ask students, every semester I ask them, about half of them like doing it by hand and about half like the calculator. So it's just you got to figure out what works for you. This has been Miss Smith's Math Tutorials.